I tried carving it out of an apple and it didn't work. And so then they well, bitch, hold on. This is my podcast. My boyfriend came downstairs the other night and I, I was in bed and he gets in bed and I like roll over. And at one point he goes, babe, do we have any fire extinguishers down here? And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> great question. Cause you guys know me, I need to be ready. And I'm like, what? I, I don't think so. And we have two fire extinguishers upstairs. Yes, I bought two full-size fire extinguishers from Amazon. <laughs> and they were upstairs. And I'm like, oh, my God, we have some upstairs. What, what's going on? Do you smell something? Are you thinking something? And he was like, no, I just wanted to make sure that if you didn't rub your legs together too fast that the blankets didn't go up in flames. <laughs> rolled over and my hairy leg brushed up against him and he was like jesus fucking christ i was like that's how you approach it by by exploiting my need to be prepared the minute that he asked if the fire extinguishers were downstairs i was like great point great idea i still haven't brought them down but i'm still thinking about it we have like a mini bonus episode because normally i do these podcasts every other week but i just wanted to drop in bring the vibes up a little bit because we were a little like <laughs> you know, last time. Um, but I did want to say I was really ner I don't know if you watched the last podcast or listened, whatever. I was really uh, <laughs> nervous about talking about that. Like I had filmed it like a week prior. And then I started getting like scared, like, oh my God, what if people think I'm like just bullshitting? Because like, it is a crazy story. But I think what shocked me the most were, and made me really sad were how many people said that something similar had happened to them and like it was just crazy um reading everybody's stories and also getting a lot of empathy or I guess sympathy for it or something um and it means a lot it, it means a lot and I'll, I'll save you the details but um a lot of y'all's words caused like a big mental shift for me and, th and that's really important and also in that I hope that me talking about my experience made some of you guys realize like wait I can be mad about this thing that happened to me hell yeah be mad be mad I I'm I'm mad for you I was reading so many of those and I was so just like some of you guys were mad for me I was mad for you too and it's crazy that sometimes we need people to get mad for us to know that somebody has done something wrong. Um, so all of that to say, get mad for your friends, okay? Because sometimes they need it. Sometimes no one has ever had their back and like defended them and you like pushing the issue and being like, nah, f this person. It, it, it can be really groundbreaking. Um, so thank you guys for doing that for me. And I, I'm going to do that for you too. Okay, anyways, I don't want to deepen the parasocial relationship too much because otherwise some of you guys are going to show up at my f***ing house. Don't do that, all right? <coughs> I have a situation going on. Well, it's no longer an active situation, but this is my fault. I caused it, like many issues. <laughs> if you're afraid of clowns, I want you to know I'm going to be talking about that a little bit, but I'm not going to, like, show you a clown or anything. You, you'd have to go digging to go find this. It's, like, in my live stream, but I am going to tell you what happened. I think I've talked about this before, but I have a small collection of vintage clowns, right? I pick cute ones. When I was a kid, I had a clown doll. <laughs> I don't know why. I think they were just really popular in the 80s, and I had, like, a lot of hand-me-down toys. And Wait. Hand-me-down or hand-me-down? I think it's hand-me-down. Hand me down those toys. Hand me down them toys. Hold on. It's hand me downs. So I had a lot of hand me down toys. And one of them was a clown doll. And so these just don't creep me out. In fact, like there's a sense of comfort in it for me. So that's kind of the explanation, right? Um, so I have like a small little collection of cute vintage clowns. I picked up the first one in Japan a couple of years ago. He was like in a case and he was adorable and he had these little symbols. And then I just started like picking up some now and then. I only have like four. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I was just, I was like, I need a new clown. <laughs> no, really though. I was like, I need a new clown. And I started browsing eBay and I found, <laughs> I found this cute little clown and he was a musical clown from the 80s and I'm like yes order now give me the clown and he gets here and this is a couple weeks ago and I pull him out 
of the container. And like I said, he's old and he's from the 80s and (laughs) you can spin him up and he plays a little song. And so I spun him up to play his little song. And what I didn't know is his head would move while he sang his little song. He does a little rendition of It's a Small World and it's very, very, very slow. And he also moves his head very slowly around because he's old. The song is slow and the movement is very slow. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. And I'll be honest, it was a little creepy. So I I spin it up and I hear my boyfriend coming upstairs and I don't want him to see the head moving because I know he's going to freak out because he's going to be like, yo, he, he doesn't care that I have like a little mini clown collection, but he cares, but he doesn't like say you can't have that. Also, just a note about my boyfriend. He's very superstitious, very into ghosts, very into conspiracies, like spirit, all of that stuff. He, he believes it fully, fully, fully. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I don't, it's just, I don't know. Um, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? So I hear him coming upstairs and I, I can't hide the clown. And he sees it on the counter just moving. Its head. <laughs> and he's like, oh, new clown. And his response is very, very positive. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And um, he's like, okay you going to keep that in your office? I was like, yeah, I'm going to keep it in the office. He's like, cool. He's like, well, he's he's cute. And I'm surprised that his response is this polite. So I package the clown up. I take him downstairs. I go, I, I'm about to put him in the office. Or no, I put him in the office and I come back out and my boyfriend goes, that is the creepiest fucking clown I've ever seen. I didn't want to say it in front of him. <laughs> Okay, this this aligns more with your personality. It, it aligns even more that he, quote, didn't want to say it in front of the clown because he thinks it's like a spirit, all right? This is a true story, okay? So we go to bed that night. The next morning, we wake up. And, and my boyfriend's also, like, very golden retriever, very, very happy. We wake up, and he's like, hey, how'd you sleep? I was like, I, I slept pretty well I was like I woke up early but I slept well and he said you have any dreams I'm like no no he's like I had a I had a nightmare last night I was like oh what happened and he said I never have nightmares and I was like I I understand and I already know I already know that this man is about to start blaming the clown for one nightmare. And I just don't want to feed into it. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that happened to you. What happened in your nightmare? He was like, they they took you and then they started tattooing my teeth. And I was like, that's actually terrifying. Like, that's very creepy. I always think about the American Horror Story episode. I don't even want to give you flashbacks to it. But you know what I'm talking about, it, right? Like, I was like, that is creepy you know and he was like yeah I didn't like it at all and I'm like oh I was like well I'm very sorry and, and it's it's true he doesn't really have nightmares I don't think anything of it the next night we go to sleep <laughs> by the way the clown's name is Carmichael so the next night we go to bed and we wake up in the morning and he tells me that he had a bad dream again and he doesn't want to talk about it and I'm like okay and I know fully fully he's about to blame the clown and I just I don't want to feed into it. And like, keep in mind, it had only been two days and like, he's very, very superstitious. And and if I give into it, he's going to start just obsessively thinking about it. Okay. So I'm kind of trying to shield him from it, but I hear him. (laughs) So then the next night we go to bed and I wake up at 3 a.m. because I had a bad dream. And I was like, okay, well, I... I have bad dreams quite frequently. Um, I, I, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of bad dreams. Okay, I don't know why. Just a lot of stress, anxiety. Um, so this isn't too abnormal for me. But where it got weird was I couldn't go back to sleep for like, a, 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 like thirty minutes to an hour. And during this time, I look over and my boyfriend is like, and I'm like, oh my god. He's having a bad dream again. 
and, and this this is the part where I start to get a little creeped out because he's having a bad dream. And then the icing on the cake for me, and I need you to I I need you to know I'm just not superstitious at all. Like a bad dream for me is just like a regular night. I hear the dog making noises. Our dog, who sleeps in her little bed next to us, was. chances of me having a bad dream my boyfriend having a bad dream and the fucking dog having a bad dream so 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 at this point the clown had been in the house for three days and i'm like okay i i, I need so i couldn't wait i i had to wake him up and i kind of like shook him a little bit i was like hey hey you good and he kind of wakes up and i was like you sounded like you were having a bad dream <laughs> Are you okay? and he was like oh no i was fine I wasn't having a bad dream. I was like, okay, good, good, good. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry. This helps me out a little bit. I think maybe, maybe the dog's not having a bad dream either. I don't know. It's so like an hour or two later, I go back to sleep. The next night, we go to bed and I'm fucking scared. <laughs> Lord help me. I just remember laying in this bed and my boyfriend is he, he puts on, he look this man is the type to put on a little anime and go to sleep he's one of those people that as soon as he puts his head on the pillow and closes his little tiny eyes, eyes he's just out he just clocked out okay so he's already out and i'm laying in the bed like <laughs> because i'm not afraid of having the bad dreams again i'm afraid of it being real I'm laying here like this. I'm looking out in the corner and so I'm just I'm like am I going to just see Carmichael standing in the doorway or or cuz his little feet just walking up. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> I'm looking around and I'm having trouble sleeping and I'm like okay. If we have bad dreams again. If if me, a not superstitious person. I'm like if we have bad dreams again. What do I do about the clown? Because, you know, I have to be prepared. I have to have a plan of action. So before I even go to bed, I'm like, I need to figure out what I'm going to do about the clown if we have bad dreams again. So I start plotting. Okay, like, do I just get some sage and do a, just do a couple, do a couple spins? Um, do I... Do I throw it away in the garbage? I was I was having visuals of him just face down in a big green garbage can. And I was like, no, he's for sure going to haunt me for just throwing him away or something like that. And then I was like, OK, I came up with with a plan that I thought was a good plan. If we had bad dreams again, I was going to take the clown to Goodwill and just leave him there. And I, I kind of felt bad because I was thinking about how like horror movie that is for there to just be like a single drop off at Goodwill in like a bag, a paper bag. And it's a cloud. <laughs> Can you imagine working at the thrift store and you're like, well, what do we have today? Like single item drop off haunted doll. You know, I, I kind of felt bad about it, but I was like, from what I've seen in horror movies, the clown has to be passed on to another entity that accepts it. And when you unbag it, so I like, I don't know. I, I just, and then, and then I was also thinking about it. I'm like, well, maybe it's not real. Is it fucked up for me to hand the clown off? Like, let's just, you know, what would you guys do? I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what you would do. Um, but also this, this night before my boyfriend told me, why don't you go, <laughs> he's like, why don't you go, say goodnight to Carmichael just to make sure he's happy. And I was like, I can't do that because the minute we start talking to the clowns, we, we make it real. You know, we, we personify them. So I, so I had gone to bed. And you, so after strategizing, planning, thinking, I think I came up with like one other plan. I was, I was going to like beat it with a wooden mallet, but I was afraid that it was going to like release the spirit or something. Because if I have another bad dream at this point, I, I, I might be a believer. So we go to bed that night. I'm so scared. And I wake up. And it was morning. And I didn't have any bad dreams. I was, and then he wakes up. And I was like, hey, 
how'd you sleep last night? He's like, it was good. I, I slept pretty good. How about you? And I was like, okay, all right. I look over at the dog. The dog looks fine. I'm fine. And then over the next couple of nights, we just go to sleep and we don't have any bad dreams. It's been about a week and a half since I got the clown and nothing nothing's happened. So I think I'd like to say I think it was just I think it was just ironic. But I'm also a firm believer that like, you know, and stuff like that, if you think about it too much, you're going to make it real. But, you know, I, di I didn't want him to think about it too much. I don't believe in that stuff. So I didn't really think about it. And then it just kind of went away. But I don't I don't know if that's anticlimactic, but that's good. Right. Do you want me to be in possession of a haunted doll? Um, oh, actually, there's one other thing. So I told my stream about this uh, last week. I told him the whole story. And I actually had brought my boyfriend down because I didn't tell him that I had had a bad dream or that I thought the dog was having a bad dream. <laughs> I didn't tell him until later because I didn't want him to worry. Okay, so the, <laughs> the night after you had like two bad dreams, yeah. I also had bad dreams. Both nights? <laughs> Why didn't you say so? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, but there's one last part I didn't tell you. Boy, so. You found him walking through the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell my stream about this. And after I finish telling the story, it's like 20 or 30 minutes, we start watching a documentary, like a murder documentary on 48 Hours. And out of nowhere, this has never happened before, my computer blue screened. It just shut down. It just froze and then flip like put me on a blue screen so i did my stream immediately shut down and i had to restart my computer and i go and check my discord and everybody in the chat is just saying carmichael carmichael shut the stream <laughs> that was that was my favorite part of it i it was fun um but the clown the clown is okay um i won't be getting any more clowns anytime soon i think we're all clowned out um, and maybe I won't get them off of eBay because I will say, I don't know what energy is coming from the home. I will say that. I don't know, but I, I think, I think the clowns are okay. I think they're okay. But on an unexpected topic that literally just came up 30 minutes ago before we were about to like shoot this podcast, I was just talking to somebody to the, he works on the podcast. Okay. And I don't know why, but we, I started talking about weed lounges and I've been thinking about this. When was the first time you guys ever heard of there being a weed lounge? I feel like almost everyone has heard about this at some point. I remember living in Virginia and years ago when marijuana got legalized in um, Denver, in Colorado, everyone, dude, people were moving out to Colorado to smoke weed, which in retrospect is hilarious. Like, it's funny that you would uproot your entire life to smoke some grass, but also you're such a law-abiding citizen that you're like, I'm going to go over there where it's not only decriminalized, but it's legal. Like, love, love that. Love that for you. But also hilarious. Um, I remember when it got legalized in Colorado and, it, and like I heard about there being weed lounges um, or weed bars, basically. And at the time, I thought this was so cool. I was like, that is going to be revolutionary. <laughs> uh, because one, you guys are doing something bad drugs and then two you're, you're doing it together in a legal setting right I thought I don't know why I thought it was gonna be did you think it was gonna be a big deal I really did um and that was I don't know 10 years ago at, at least right ever since then I have never driven by a marijuana bar I and I'm sure there's gonna be some of you guys out there that are gonna be like well I've been to one before and they're fun or I went to one in Amsterdam da, da, da. I'm talking about my experience right now okay I've never driven by one I've never seen one. I've never been invited out to one. And any anytime I hear about one, I, I, it's like passing and fleeting. And then it just never – I feel like they didn't blow up in the way that they were supposed to. Um, I deduce this could be for a couple of reasons. Obviously, there's hundreds of reasons why this could be. You leave yours in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on the podcast, like on Spotify or Apple, I need you to rate it five stars. Thank you. <laughs> one, that is too expensive. 
That is way too expensive, okay? I remember when I was in high school, somebody sold my friend and I like a half an ounce of weed for like a hundred dollars. I don't know if that, that sounds, I'm pretty sure they did. It was actually, it was oregano. It was, it, it was pretty much oregano or it wasn't oregano. It was, what, what do you call it? Butt weed, shake weed. Like it was the bad stuff, right? And we didn't smoke weed. We wanted to impress these guys and they were pot smokers. <laughs> My friend liked one of the guys, and I liked one of the other guys. By the way, this is Alien Girl. I've known this bitch for so long, okay? If you've listened to past episodes, you know. But anyways, this is, like, my best friend of a long time. So so she liked one of these guys. And I also, like, had a crush on, like, his friend. And so we were like, we need to get some marijuana. We need to get pot. <laughs> so we can tell them. Girls do this shit, okay? They just be plotting, right? Our plan was to get marijuana. And I told her, I was like, we need to get a, a lot of weed because they need to know, like, we're real fucking smokers. <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm going off on another tangent about another story. Okay. I, yeah, I'm telling you the story. I told her they need to know that we are real smokers and tokers. And I had never done a drug before in my life. Okay. I was the type of girl that saw um, that there was a- alcohol as an active ingredient in vanilla extract and I was like can I drink this I didn't it's toxic it will poison you but like that's how unseasoned I was okay I tell my friend you need to find a marijuana dealer and she's like okay so she like texted one of her friends who was in the military and and I was like why would you fucking text him you know but he had a plug so We go, I had a car at the time. I think I was 16. So we go all the way to this, like, kind of, it was a seedy part of town. It was a place, like, we didn't go very often. And we pull into a video store. Am I talking about a crime? (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. Statue of limitations, okay? So we pull into a video store, and... I'm, I'm there. She's in the car. And, and and she's like, you need to unlock the door so he can get in. I was like, what the fuck is he getting in the car? Because I don't know any of this stuff, right? I just had the money. She didn't she didn't have a job or a car. <laughs> she just had the plug. And I have the car. And I have the money, right? So I unlock the door. And he gets in the car. And we make the exchange. Oh, my God. I'm talking about. I don't know if I should be talking about this. I'm going to talk about it. So he gives us. He gives us this big bag. I see this thing and I'm like, alien girl, we just hit the jackpot. These guys are going to love us. We, they're going to know that we smoke weed. And she's like, yes. So we, <laughs> so we go back home and I, I think we might've texted them that night. I, it, like, I think she hits him up and she's like, Hey dude. Oh my God. I, I'm going to have to call her for a second after this. Bitch, hold on. I'm recording the podcast right now. You're on speakerphone. I started talking about weed lounges on the pod. <laughs> and somehow I just went into an old story. Do you know what story? <laughs> Is it when we met at that, met that guy's a sex shop for I thought it was a video a store. <laughs> no, it was a sex shop. Okay. Or like how much was it? How much weed did we get? <laughs> remember, I was like, do you remember? I was like, don't worry. He really likes me. <laughs> Dude, we were little demons. Okay. Uh, yes, that that is it. I was just getting to the part where we got it. And I was like, these guys are going to, I'm, I'm telling exactly why we got the weed. I was like, they're going to love us. And wait, okay. I'm going to tell the story, but <laughs> <laughs> did we? Remember? literally carve an apple to smoke out of oh i know because the next part is the device but let me tell that um do, did we text them that night that we got the pot or did we like wait yeah. a day <laughs> Dude, i'm pretty sure we texted them and had them come over that night and then wait i remember i <laughs> i tried carving it out of an apple and it didn't work and so then they well, bitch, like, hold on this is my podcast really- so we texted them that night <laughs> Me. I'm 
passionate about this story. I dude, I know you, but you're not a guest today, and I'm the storyteller. Wait, am I really giving away the story? I'm like trying to like jog your recollection. <clears throat> okay, can I? Okay, can you just can I tell the story and can you just like okay. go on mute or something for a minute? And if you have something to say, you can say something. If it's like if it's dire, if it's dire, I'll 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 tag in. Okay, can you please mute? <laughs> okay, I'll mute. So we text them that night, and we 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 have to, but like I don't think we texted them yet because we needed to start planning. So we can't just have the pot and not have something to smoke out of. So the first the first thing we think of is like an apple. Like we can't make a foily, right? So it, there's the apple, and she tries to make the apple, but I tell her no. We have like a pound of weed. They need to know we're hardcore smokers. We need to make a gravity bong. And she's like, oh my God, great idea. So we're at her dad's house and we, you know, cut a, a two liter in half or something. We find a giant, <laughs> we find like a giant container, like to put the water in at the bottom. And then you have to burn a hole through the cap at the top and put some kind of device like a, like something metal or aluminum at the top so that it can hold the weed and you can burn it right so we start going through her dad's toolkit for a little piece to put at the top we have never made a gravity bong before ever so we make the gravity bong we also have the apple which is not what we were using but the grav was ready to go and we were ready for the guys to come over so we're at her dad's house and like the, her dad like would just go to sleep and just like didn't give a fuck what we did. Right. And so we're at the house and the guys come over and I think they were like a year older than us or so. And so we're like, hey, and they're like, hey, and, I'm, and we're like, yeah, the weed's over here. <laughs> and they, they come in and we're like, so what have you guys been up to? Yes. Yes, that's what happened. Okay, keep going. <laughs> so we're so we're like, what have you guys been up to? And I don't know. We have like some kind of small talk. And then I, like, obviously, this was not the exact script, but I know exactly how we were acting. And these were the vibes. I sh you not like we might have said something about along the lines of like, so you guys ready to smoke or what? Like, I'm telling you, it was like, <laughs> like, because that's what we were here for. So in one of the worst moments of my life, which uh, not really, I, and as a reminder, you know, sometimes we tend to over-dramatize the small things in life while, you know, l l minimizing the big things, right? That's, that's, that's sometimes what we do in life. So I will say this is the worst moment in my entire life. <laughs> so the guys are there and we pull out the gravity bong and we're about to start loading it up. And like <laughs> the guy says to us, did you guys just make this or something? <laughs> and like, <laughs> when I say I froze, there was not a lick of residue in this water. It was not brown. There was no weed in the bowl. There was nothing. Oh, this is a fresh gravity bong. And like, I didn't even, I couldn't even save face in this moment and be like, oh yeah, our uh, other woman's dirty. I just <laughs> didn't say anything. And, and so we load it up and we, sm oh my God, you know what I just remembered? Bitch, do you remember that they took one look at our weed and they were like, um, we have our own. Dude, do you, uh, I, uh, I don't know if I remember that, but I know that happened. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Oh, dude. I remember this. I are you gonna get to the are you gonna get to the part where we let go of it let go of what where we literally were so traumatized that we just gave all the weed away <laughs> <laughs> we we smoked their pot they they had brought their own yes. we smoked their pot Dude, because it was all yeah, because and we didn't know we just thought yeah. th that we had a big bag of weed and like yeah. we were gonna be so cool 
I'm pretty sure someone, like, told me the next day, they were like, yeah, he was so glad that he was able to unload that on you because he really needed to get some, like, new stuff. Dude, I remember you telling me that, and I want to scream. So, she's right. I think we just... We just gave it away to people after that. It's still under the guise of, like, look how cool we are. That was definitely the vibe. Uh, listen, girls do embarrassing things. And I'm willing to share them with you because I think they're funny. We've been laughing about this story for, like, years. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you for co-hosting. All right, now I'm done. Okay. Okay. Yes. <sighs> so... As a person that has a lot of experience with marijuana, I couldn't understand why the lounges weren't popping off. But obviously, it it's evident to me for a number of reasons. But like I said, there's lots of reasons. You leave what you think below. Um, one, way too expensive. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not paying. Like, imagine looking at a menu of like different types of weed, and the cheapest one is thirty dollars for a joint. I'm not paying. For no joint. Now I've lived in California for a while. I used to smoke back in the day. I don't smoke anything. I don't smoke anymore. I don't. I don't do edibles. I don't. I don't know. Weed just slows me down. I'm getting old now. Okay. But I. That story aside. After I moved to California, I smoked a little weed. Okay. A little, a little, a little, a little something. All right. I'm not paying forty dollars for no joint. I'm. I'm not. And then also, I don't know about y'all. I don't understand functional high people. I don't get it. I was somebody that only could smoke weed after like nine o'clock at night when everybody's gone and nobody's going to fucking call me or talk to me. Why? Because I go into a pit of social anxiety and people would just be like, oh, you need to smoke a sativa. You need to smoke an indica, not a sativa. Yeah, I smoked the indica. And guess what? I was scared and asleep. <laughs> that, that's it. So I, I one don't understand how people are like functioning while high. I could never. You guys have some kind of special superpower. I'll never forget going to one of my friend's houses one time. We were like in my early 20s. And she was doing her taxes and just smoking a J. I was like, you're not going to pass out, bitch. I say bitch endearingly, right? I, I say bitch to carry the story, but also endearingly. And I, I couldn't believe it. She was just smoking and talking away. I can't do that. Um, I get I don't even think I've ever really been high going out in public. Like, if I'm somewhere and somebody's like, oh, do you want to hit this? I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> no, 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 no. It makes my anxiety so bad. And then something that happens to me, if I'm over-caffeinated or if I was, like, way too high, I would just get really, really quiet until it went away. That That's what I do. I, I basically turn into like a small woodland animal that just freezes until the danger goes away. And I'm not kidding. Like if I'm over caffeinated or like high for hours, I'll just sit there <laughs> until it goes away. So the concept of being, and I, I talk about this too because I do know that there's, you know, multiple sides of it. People like me that get super, super anxious. People that don't smoke at all. People that are able to fully function. People that just go to sleep. You know, all that. There's all different ways. Uh, I don't know how people would be acting in the lounges, you know? Like, it doesn't seem like, since there's so many different ways that marijuana can affect you, I don't understand how all those people mix and mingle together. Like, when you're at a bar and you're drinking, really, it's it, people usually get a little bit more outgoing, you know? Uh, and so it feels like if people are drinking about the same amount, depending on their tolerance, they usually get a little more outgoing, a little more, you know, fun or something like that. We can just go any other way. So the thought of being in a lounge with a bunch of high people scares me. It terrifies me even. I remember a couple years ago, there was somebody here in L.A. that was telling me like, oh, we're about to do um, a marijuana comedy tour. And in theory, that's like such a good idea. I don't know if they ran it. And part of me is thinking like, oh, should I be saying her idea on a podcast? But then I remember she fucked me over. So <laughs> I think they did it and I don't think that it worked out. Uh, but in the, in theory, that seems like it should be a good idea until you remember there's a large portion of people that get super, super anxious when they're high. I, I, and I'm one of them. I just it, it sounds like a nightmare to me. But now after talking about all of this. I kind of do want to go to a weed lounge. Oh, I don't, I'm not smoking anymore, man. I don't, I, I got it all out of my system. I'm clean. I'm clean, boys. I feel like, I feel like I was being, I was being super, super lazy. I was being super lazy when I was high. Okay. That's why. <clears throat> but 
I do want to go to one of these lounges now because I just want to see. If anybody has been to one of these, can you please tell me? Tell me your experience. Like, I don't know, leave it in the comments or like DM it on Instagram or something. It'll, it'll go on my Instagram or my message request. I might see it. I might be able to see it. Just tell me what those lounges are like. And also, please, I only, I only have one Instagram account. I only have, the, the only social media I have is probably in the description of this video and, and my other ones, right? I say this because I must have gone on some kind of list because for many, many years, uh, people impersonate content creators online. I've had people that, uh, there's people that would like take my photos from Instagram. And also I'm like, this is just, this is just what happens when you're a content creator. Okay. It's just what fucking happens. Um, I'm not complaining. I'm just like informing, kind of complaining, but I, I accept it. Okay. But, uh, people would like take my Instagram, like stories. Like if I posted like a little selfie or a little mirror picture, and then they would go pretend to be me on Google meet meet random people sometimes saying that they're bows or sometimes saying they're alicia or something and they'd take my pictures and have full-on relationships with people on google meet or different websites and then they would extort money out of these people pretending to be me and so then you know months later or something like that the people that were getting extorted would eventually find my real profile and be like hey alicia why'd you stop talking to me <laughs> Alicia and I'm sorry you got scammed it happens all the time but and it's been happening for years and, it, and it's hard to combat it other than you know talking about it kind of like I am now I try to put out a few notices here and there because anybody getting scammed um under my name or thinking it's me it, it's really upsetting um but I do what I can I try see I'm talking about it right now but recently there was like a big uptick in like impersonators um, and it makes me think, I'm like, do they have like a little list going around? Like this person has this many followers. Here's a whole folder full of assets that you can use to pretend to be this person. I don't know. Um, and it got really, really bad for like a month or two. And I had a lot of people that were getting scammed um, from somebody pretending to be me. It was, it was like it was like multiple people. Um, one of the funniest ones was uh, there was somebody that was running a bot on my main account and every time somebody would leave a comment on my video on the Bose versus the world YouTube channel a bot that said like Bose versus the world and it had like the same little avatar as me would instantly reply to everyone's comment and it would say something jumbled like good thanks for watching vid hope you enjoyed mate cheers period I'd like to talk to you privately on telegram <laughs> And this comment is so ridiculous, okay? It's so ridiculous. The idea of me saying, cheers, buddy, is just, like, clearly it's a UK bot, okay? Clearly, clearly. Change up the text a little bit, my guy. Um, so everybody was getting this comment, and it's also extra messed up because even though we hide, the, we try to, like, catch him and hide the comments on the channel, some people were getting an email that said, like, Bo's versus the world <laughs> responded to your comment, and, and, and they, they thought that I was saying, cheers, buddy. I want to talk to you privately, which sounds like a threat, by the way. Um, this one I had to try to talk about because the scam was like running on Telegram. And if you guys, look, y'all ever watched a Stephanie Sue video? The, the stuff that's going on in Telegram is crazy, okay? I watched one of her videos recently on the, the I don't even want to tell you what it was. It was fucked up. So when I see they're doing this on Telegram, you know, they can send phishing links, they can extort, they can all this stuff. And, and so I'm, I'm like, OK, hold on. So we're trying to hide the comments and I, you know, put something else about it. It was alarming to me how many messages I got that were just straight up like, hey, Bose, I got your comment, uh, but I didn't know how to reply and I don't have Telegram. So what's up? And I was like, it wasn't me. And I was like, how could you possibly actually think this is me? However, you know what? If, if you watch somebody a lot, like if, if you guys watch me a whole lot and you see that I respond to your thing, sometimes it's just exciting and it's like, well, I want this to be real. And like, I fucking get that, you know? So I was like trying to tell people like, hey, it's not me. Don't click any links. Like, bye, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, dude, I feel so bad about that. That is all I have to talk about today. But normally these podcasts are every other week. 
Um, I just wanted to jump in and do an extra one because the vibes were like a little, they were important, but normally I feel like this is like a pretty lighthearted show. So I just wanted to bring it back to that energy, um, let you guys know how important your words to me were. Um, and yeah, and also I'm about to go on vacation, so you're not going to like see me that much, especially if you're like a live stream viewer. Well, we, we recorded, we're recording podcasts, um, through the week so that they're still like running while I'm gone. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, what's today? Today's Thursday. I'm going to Coachella today. It'll be my first time ever going. Um, I, I don't really care about music festivals. I'm not a big festival person. But I kind of just wanted to try Coachella, especially, bro, I'm 32 now, okay? I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to have the energy to go to a festival when I'm 35. I barely have it right now. Uh, we actually bought tickets before the lineup even dropped, and I was so, so, so excited just to, like, see what it was, and it came out, and I was like, okay, okay, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a millennial. I like No Doubt. I, I like Lana. I'm a Lana girl, Okay. I'm going to go do that, and it'll kickstart my vacation before I go to Europe, which I'm so, 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 so stoked about. If you've been watching me for a while, you probably know I usually, like, take a big, like, annual break where I just run away from everything, you know, reset myself creatively, and try to come back with, like, new, fresh ideas. Um, You know, you, you should always try to avoid burnout, and if you can give yourself breaks, I know a lot of us can't. Like, it's getting time off from work is a nightmare and like they want you chained to your desk all the time um I, so I try to take advantage of the career that I've been given where I can take these big breaks but y'all please trust and believe when your boy is here she is working okay <laughs> she's working and it doesn't stop it doesn't end thanks for watching you're the best I'll see you guys uh, next week. Well, this is just a little drop-in episode, okay? There will be one next week, and then after that, we'll go back to every other week because nobody wants to listen to me talk this much, okay? Nobody wants it. Bye.